Hello everyone, I'm going to start our uh, video today. I'm using my iPad so um, I can write on the screen and do some practice problems with you. Hopefully this works pretty well. So what we're going to do is start talking about writing chemical re reactions. Um, the first part of this will be writing chemical reactions from word examples. And then the next thing that we'll learn about is how to write chemical reactions um, and predict their products. So the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at writing equations, describing chemical reactions using appropriate symbols. We're going to do some review here. Remember that all chemical reactions have two parts, a reactant side and a product side. The reactants will turn into products. The reactants are on the left side and the products are on the right side. And they are separated by this yield. Remember, it's yield. Okay. In a chemical reaction, the way atoms joined is changed. That's what happens from the reactant side to the product side. Atoms aren't created or destroyed. This is the law of conservation of mass. We're not going to create or destroy any atoms from the reactant side to the product side. Chemical reactions can be described in several ways. One can be a sentence. So copper reacts with chlorine to form copper 2 chloride. Or it could be a word equation, which would be copper plus chlorine yields copper 2 chloride. Two ways that we can see a chemical reaction written. So there are going to be some important symbols in the word equations that will help you. First, you have an arrow. Remember, that's your yield sign. Then you're going to read things for the arrow, such as reacts to form or yields. When you see a plus sign, it means the word and. Then we also have these symbols that you might find after the formula. So S stands for solid. G stands for gas. L stands for liquid. And AQ stands for aqueous solution. This is um, dissolved in water. Okay. Those are two S's there, guys. Now, um, there's what is called the skeleton equation. The skeleton equation uses formulas and symbols to describe a reaction. It doesn't indicate how many. So, this here is the type of reaction that you were given when you were asked to balance. So when I was asking you to balance, you would go through and add the coefficients in front. When you were done, it, you would have a balanced equation with the coefficients. When the coefficients aren't there, it's called a skeleton equation. Okay? And all chemical reactions um, can be written as sentences that describe that reaction. So here's an example of a word equation. Um, from this, we're going to write the skeleton equation, and then we'll balance it. So solid iron 3 sulfide reacts with gaseous hydrogen chloride. Another name for this is uh, hydrochloric acid to form iron 3 chloride and hydrogen sulfide gas. So the first thing you do with a reaction like this is you identify the compounds. So we have iron 3 sulfide, we have hydrogen chloride, iron 3 chloride, and hydrogen sulfide. So iron 3 sulfide reacts with gaseous, that is a plus sign, reacts with the two form is an arrow, and then you have the and, which is a plus. So when you go through to do this, you need to write the formulas. Well, iron 3 
is Fe plus 3, and sulfide is sulfur minus 2. Remember those formulas. I'm writing those formulas. We're going to drop and swap this. So we get Fe 2 S3 plus, then we have hydrogen chloride. H is a plus 1. Chlorine is a minus 1. So you're going to just have HCl. That yields, so see what you have the plus the yields. Then we have iron 3 chloride. So this is Fe. plus 3, and chlorine is a minus 1. So we're going to end up having FeCl3 plus hydrogen sulfide. H is a plus 1. Sulfur is a minus 2. So we get H2S. So then here what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to balance to get the overall balanced equation. <laughs> so, the biggest thing is the fact that you have these threes and twos, and it's going to get really hard to get a three into a two and a two into a three. So, our, our, our main number that's going to be similar is six. Um, so, we need to balance this. If we have a 2 here, we get 2 iron, which we have 2 iron over here, and we have 6 chlorine. So we need a 6 here. That gives us 6 chlorine, but now we have 6 hydrogen, so we need a 3 here. Hydrogen is 6, now sulfur is a 3 and 3, so we're all balanced with that. Okay, let's try the next one. Uh, nitric acid dissolved in water reacts with solid sodium carbonate to form liquid water and carbon dioxide gas, and the sodium nitrate dissolves in water. So we need to find our, our compounds. We have nitric acid. We have sodium carbonate. We have water, carbon dioxide, and sodium nitrate. So nitric acid is HNOH. NO3, H is a plus 1, Nitric or nitrate is a minus 1, so we have HNO3, reacts, that's a plus sign, form is an arrow, and is a plus sign, and and is a plus sign. So we have nitric acid reacts, that's a plus, sodium carbonate, well, sodium is Na, carbonate is CO3, carbonate's a minus 2, sodium's a plus 1. So we're going to drop and swap, so this is going to be Na2CO3. We have water, which we know is H2O. We have carbon dioxide, which is CO2. And then we have sodium nitrate, which is NaNO3. Now, we need to make sure it's balanced, and here it's not balanced. So, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need, we have one hydrogen, we have two here. If I add a two on the left side, it gives me two nitrates, put a two here. Alright, that's what we should do. So we're going to put a 2 here. Gives me 2 hydrogen. Gives me 2 nitrates. And I'm going to put a 2 here in front of NaO3. So now I have 2 hydrogen, 2 hydrogen, 2 nitrates, 2 nitrates, 2 Na's, 2 Na's. I have 1 carbon, 1 carbon, 3 oxygen, and then 1 plus 2 is 3 on the product side. Now, if we were to read these, we would read these as iron 
reacts with oxygen to form um, iron 3 oxide. So see how you read that? Over here we have copper reacts with silver nitrate to form silver and copper to nitrate. And then down here we have N uh, nitrogen dioxide. And with this one, we can say decomposes into nitrogen and oxygen. So it's a good way to be able to read them. For the most part, it's going to be the last slide where you're given the um, reactions as either a full-out word equation or a skeleton equation and asked to go through and write out and balance the overall equation.